Hey everybody, Ben here from the Bono Podcast and welcome to Special Teams Sunday where we look at the best unofficial teams in Blood Bowl. So today we're going to be looking at one of my favourites that I got to commentate uh, over in a tournament last year. I think it was Lockdown Bowl and uh, this is another human-esque team. This is the Nippon team. So this team is from Fumble. It's from the Fumble Secret League which is a fantastic resource. There's nearly a hundred teams that have been tested and played and hundreds of games have been made with them so blood bowl is a very tight rule set there's a lot of cool stuff to do in there we've got 29 teams in blood bowl 2020 now all of the fumble secret league teams are currently in the old rules as is fumble so they're still sitting in the 2016 versions um, but at some point that will change but we're going to have a look at the nippon team some of the cool players and some cool conversions you can do to get this team onto your pitch So Nippon is another place in the Warhammer world, the Warhammer world of old, that was barely explored by Games Workshop. It was hinted at. We saw a couple of bits and bobs, a couple of characters, a couple of pieces of lore come out of there. Now there is actually a, a famous player from Nippon um, in the Blood Bowl Core rulebook um, from uh, first edition and second edition, I think, which is Hoshikomi, who is a ninja. And I don't want to bury the lead here, guys, but the Nippon team has ninjas and samurai so nippon is a kind of fantasy japan uh, feudal japan kind of style which is pretty cool so there's two nippon teams we're going to focus on the core nippon team which is the southern nippon team there is a northern nippon team and we'll probably do that in the next few weeks because it's, it's quite cool there's got like a big oni ogre thing oh man I want to do the Minotaur team next, but then, oh, I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. Anyway, the roster here, it's made up of Ashugaru, which are the lineman positionals. Uh, we've got four Samurai, which are your kind of blitzers in this team. There are two Warrior Monks who start with Claws, um, movement seven, they're pretty fast. They kind of before the role of a runner in this team because they get agility access early on. And then you have Ninjas. Now, I love the ninjas especially in the blood bowl 2016 rule set it's going to be interesting to see how well they function in 2020 because they have a leap but if you've been watching the channel and you watched our theory thursday on thursday <laughs> surprise there um you will see that leap is not as bad as we all thought and these ninjas are going to be very frightening in 2020 as well 60k rerolls for the team makes it a kind of medium cost team which is just fine so let's dive into the players themselves now we're going to start out with the linemen here. So the Ashigaru, you're going to recognize the cost and the skill set and the stats here. General access on a normal ASP on secondary. 50k a piece, movement 6, strength 3, edge 3, armor 8, no skills. These guys are human linemen. So the teams we've looked at so far, not a lot of them dive... They're quite unique actually. Not a lot of them take a template of a team and juggle it up a bit. This team here, the Nippon team, is a great example of what you can do by tweaking a couple of positionals on a team. These guys, straight up human linemen. There's nothing great about them, there's nothing bad about them. If you had a team of them, you could still win a game every now and again. So the cool thing here is that the baseline for this team is human linemen at a good cost. Happy with that. But I'm really happy with these guys. So 0-4 Samurai Blitzers. They're just Samurai, but they are Blitzers, and you'll see why. Gemini Strength on a regular 0-4, 90k a pop. Movement 7, Strength 3, Edge 3, Armor 8, and they come with a block. That's right, these Samurai are Human Blitzers. Now, Human Blitzers are just awesome. Like, yeah, they're not the fastest player in the world. They're not the strongest. They're not the most agile, but they have a fantastic package team element to them. And you can take four of them. They get general and strength, which means if you need tackle, you get tackle. You need mighty blow, you need guard, you get them. These are your guys. And the fact you've got four of them is awesome. So they are they are human blitzers. It is a little bit of a shame that the player called the Samurai doesn't have anything different about them. But I think that really just highlights how great the human blitzer is. Because if these guys got any additional skills, they would be probably a little bit too strong as they stand they are solid they are human blitzers and human blitzers are great now we've got the first of the fancy positionals here so we've got nought to two warrior monks now these kind of function as runners so general and agility is their standard skill set nought to two of them 70k a pop movement seven strength three edge three and armor seven here 
they come with claws. So these warrior monks are really interesting. Generally speaking, they don't get taken early on. That armor 7 and the lack of a combat skill makes them really second string to those samurai. Samurai are awesome, the warrior monks are cool, and having claws is actually really useful later on because samurai by that point probably gonna have a guard or two, which means these guys get to wander up, take a two die block, and they already have claws. But general and agility and movement 7 means that they become bludgers really quickly. They become kind of nerfed werewolves in a way. The movement's slower, they don't have frenzy, but they do get blodge pretty quick. They're good movement and that claws element is going to massively help you out every now and again. But for me, it's all about the ninja. Two of them, guys. Okay, 90k a piece here. Movement 8, strength 2, edge 4, armor 7, dodge and leap. So they are essentially gutter runners, but they've lost a square of movement and they get leap instead. General agility means that they can get blow and get blodge real quick or they can go for other skills instead. Ninjas are fantastic, so I got to commentate a bunch of games. This must have been Lockdown Bowl then. Yeah, it was me and Matt's BBL doing the commentary on this. It was awesome to see. These ninjas were fantastic. This feels like a human team with some of the more advanced bits removed and just a pair of slow gutter runners chucked in there or um, strength busted war dancers. They've got that vibe to them. Now, Fumble is 2016 rules, which means they are just leaping around on great numbers all of the time. Uh, in 2020, that's going to get nerfed ever so slightly, but they were strong. They were really strong positionals. They were really difficult to stop, and I really love the fact that there was only two of them. Two was plenty. Got to run as for Skaven. Four of them is just horrific. You cannot stop that. When you've got two ninjas, you can survive with one. It's a lot easier with two, but the fact that there are only two of them is actually a very strong balancing point. One would be uh, a fun element, but two just means you get a pair of ninjas. That edge is massive. They become your ball carriers, they become your star throwers and your star catchers. In the new edition, they are just going to be star runners, star catchers, no problem at all. That edge 2 plus means they're going to be collecting the ball. There is no passing game in this Nippon team and you don't need it because the whole game here is Ashigaru. Supported by Samurai, create a hole, ninjas fly over, score touchdowns. So let's have a look at a starting roster for the Nippon team. Uh, we've gone with this one here, which is 970, so um, you can save the rest up and take an Apothecary, perhaps. Or an extra Ashigaru. The fact is, though, that those guys being armor 8 means they stick around, which is actually very helpful. So 5 Ashigaru linemen, 4 Samurai, 2 Ninjas, and 3 rerolls brings you to 970. I would probably go with that one, save 30k, pick up an Apothecary second time around. Um, the other thing you can do is drop a reroll, go with the same lineup, but have that Apothecary. The da it's going to keep a ninja alive potentially, but you're going to have to spend a longer time saving up for that third reroll. It, uh, it's, it's, it's a tough one, it's up to you and it depends on the kind of climate of your league as well. When it comes to fumble and secret teams, there does tend to be a little bit more of claw than there would normally be. That means nothing when your uh, ninjas are armor 7. And those are the ones you want to worry about. You've got four samurai, one goes down, you'd be fine with three for a little while. Ashigaru linemen are freebies. You know what? You get the line, you get journeymen. It's not going to be a problem. They go on the line and they die. They've got decent armor as well. Ninjas are the ones you want to save. So having that apothecary does keep them alive. I'd probably just run one game, buy the apothecary, then start probably farming in maybe a warrior monk or an ashigaru lineman to bolster it up there's no big guy on this team so your combat power has to come from um that phalanx of samurai working together but you know when you've got four of them they're going to get mighty blow quickly you've got two ninjas and four blitzers okay that's six really solid scoring threats and when you add in the, the monks as well you become you end up with some couple of movement seven dodges real quickly as well the team functions really well it has what i would probably give a three and a half star offense for like punishment and in combat that's fine it's all about samurais being great human blitzers and ninjas just doing great magical ninja things uh skill wise kick is awesome on this team because ninjas start with the leap so you kick close they don't get the ball your ninja's jumping around it's grabbing the ball one ninja grabs the ball collects it farms it back to the other one samurai protect the ninja you move forward six squares cheeky ninja leap 
dodge touchdown scored uh guard mighty blow on the samurai just means that they can create your 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 cohesive combat cohort and then your ninjas getting blocked makes them blodgers at movement eight and edge four it's just awesome i just love this team it's so good it's just a minor tweak from humans and yes i know all of you are gonna go well of course you like it ben there's basically gutter there's basically flying gutter runners on there and yeah i know but they're only movement eight and there's only two of them and the rest of the team is well the rest of the team is basically a good human team I love this team. It's been on my to-do list since that tournament. Now, I went with Zinch instead for one of my secret teams. Uh, and honestly, the thought of having no tabletop slowed that down. And then the fact we've gone into Blood Bowl 2020 and we don't have the full rules for these guys yet has uh, made me think that we've probably got a year before we see too many of the special teams on the tabletop. But the Nippon team here is really, really solid. It's not crazy. The ninjas are good, but the rest of the team is fine. And you know what? Those ninjas are not as good as war dancers. They're just not. They don't have the strength. They don't come with blocks, so don't worry too much about it. Let's have a look at some miniature options for the Nippon team. So the reason the team was on my to-do list for such a long time is because it is actually very easy to implement at a low level. Get a human team, okay? If you've got a standard human team, great. If you don't have a human team, then you can build your Nippon themed human team and it can be dual purpose. OK, so these are Puppets Wars heads. I bought a load of heads for my human team. I went with the night theme. You guys would have seen that if you watched um, seven super series. So there's some samurai heads. There's two different types. I like that. These guys for the Ashigaru. I'd like that. Puppets War heads fit on dudes just fine. So these go on linemen. These go on your blitzers. Um, I didn't consider what I would do with the warrior monks because they're kind of secondary, but honestly, you need some claws, you need some bold heads, that's not going to be massively tricky to achieve. Honestly, I'd probably convert my throwers um, to be those warrior monks. Now, as for ninjas, um, because there's two of them, you can track down some cool ninja models, and that's kind of what I was planning to do. But if that's just too much, look at the heads on the far left-hand side, the kind of assassin heads. Chuck those assassin heads on a pair of human catchers just paint them black no one's gonna it's gonna be very easy to understand who the speed eight edge four ninjas are on your team that's what uh one two three four packs of heads that's like 20 quid with postage on top of your human team you end up with a really cool looking human team that can function as a nippon team and i just loved that idea so much you get cool ninjas, which will create a very interesting dynamic. The samurai and the ashigaru work together to be a really solid team anyway. And the warrior monks just add a bit of spice. I love it. I think the team's brilliant. And that's why this one is still on my special team to build list. Um, but obviously, Blood Bowl 2020 transition changed that up a bit. But this is going to happen. And if I don't use these heads, I'll be 3D printing some. But I think this is just so much easier. And I really like the way this looks. All right, so that's the Nippon team. As you guys got, I'm a big fan. So if you're up for playing some Fumble Secret League stuff, jump on to Fumble Secret League. Um, join the Discord. I think it's probably the best way to find some games, but or just join our Discord. I'm sure there's some nutters in ours who fancy some Secret League stuff as well. I'm one of them. The Nippon team is a really cool twist on humans, and I really am looking forward to seeing how these rules get adjusted into 2020. I cannot wait for Fumble to be adjusted into 2020 because we get to run an extra 100 different teams with the best Blood Bowl rules I think we've ever had. So it's great times all around. Nippon, fantastic modeling opportunity, really cool play style just two thumbs up for me let me know what you think of the nippon team in the comments i'm gonna wrap up now thank you ever so much for watching we'll be back soon with more blood bowl content happy blocking thanks very much for watching we really appreciate your support if you want to support the show even further please like and subscribe it really helps us out or come and join us in our patreon uh, link below where you get early access to our content and monthly competitions see you later